fellow people, I'm Ginny Motherwell and I'm a fourth generation witch. I'm doing something a bit different today and it's really way out there. This is, you know, as weirdo as they come, as they say. So I just need you to suspend any disbelief for the next 10 minutes or so, whilst I tell you this story of the ash tree. Before I start on what's been happening, I just need you to have a look back at about a video I made called Wands, Dryads and Witchcrafts, because this explains about the ash tree which fell over, which grew on the top of a hill overlooking my house and the whole of this part of the world. It stood sentinel looking out over the countryside. This ash tree was incredibly old and had a dryad spirit in it. Now, trees do have tree spirits in them. There's different levels of tree spirits. The sort of most top level is the dryad. They are sort of the guardian spirit of that group of trees over that area. Now, they are mortal, so to speak, so they will die. And this is exactly what has happened to this ash tree. One summer's day, it blew over in a storm and crashed to the ground. It was deeply upsetting for all of us who loved this tree, but the dryad energy contained within it now is released back into the earth. And although it's latent and lying around this area, it is still there and can be used. The energy of this dryad is therefore just dispersed back out into this world, where it will come back into force again in some way or form. Now, I wasn't to know that I would be the perpetrator of bringing that force back. Now, as many of you know, I've got some children. They are range in age from teenager to teenager. And the teenage boy and his male teenage boy friends all came round on a Sunday this week and decided that it would be a really good idea to play with an axe. They were down at the bottom of the garden behind the old kennels and they saw that there was a very nice tree just there waiting for them to try out their axe on it. Sadly and incredibly upsettingly you can see that they have done this huge amount of damage. Now damage at this level to an ash tree gives it it's about a 60-40% of living, 40% that it will, 60% that it won't. And although we've had it looked at by a tree surgeon and we've, we're going to do everything possible to try and save the tree, this amount of bark removed is incredibly dangerous for this tree. And it's a beautiful tree. I mean, can you just look at it? It's the most stunning ash tree. So you can imagine how upset we all were when this happened. So the parents all decided that the children must do manual labour as punishment and a lot of it because we're utterly, utterly distressed idiot children. I can't tell you how much of an idiot I think these 15 year old boys were. Having been told, put that axe down by both Mr. Metherill and Mr. Metherill's brother. So, you know, they should have known, but boys will be boys. However, we looked at this tree and I am desperate to save it. And of course, this is where the witchcraft comes in. Now, as we mentioned, there was a dryad ash tree at the top of the hill which died and fell over last year. And that a spirit of that ash tree is still um, extant in this world. It is incredibly rare to have a full on dryad in your tree by you or that you know about. You know, there are tree spirits, but they're sort of they might be lesser tree spirits. They might just be, you know, slightly less conscious, not quite the energy's not quite there. So this particular tree spirit, I was very lucky. And when it died, I did harvest some of the branches to keep them and send them away to my subscribers. I obviously have kept some. And it is through this that I'm going to try and protect and save this tree. In bearing in mind that my tree surgeon says it's only got a 40% chance of living because of the damage done to it. The dryad wand has got this amazing dryad energy of it. And with this energy, I can pull all the sort of leftover dryad energy that's floating about in this area, because when the tree died, the energy dispersed. And I can pull that energy back and put it into this tree. Now, what I suspect will happen is that this will make a sort of baby dryad. And the tree will grow and the dryad 
will grow with it and the tree will be saved and there will be a sort of baby dryad within the tree. I'm not quite sure whether it'll be a dryad or just a simple tree spirit. I don't know. So the research that I did involved looking through a lot of my reference books, looking at tree magic through varying different cultures, because witchcraft, as we all know, is simply the movement of energy. Once I'd garnered all that information, I then sat down and wrote the spell with the help of a couple of spirit guides. So I called in some, some dead people who had looked after trees themselves and knew what they were talking about and asked their advice. This is, after all, only a spell that moves energies around. But I'm going to call that energy, I'm going to move it, and then I'm going to push it into the tree to help save the tree. Involved with that, I'm, there's going to be my energy, and, and I'm going to bring in some Mother Earth energy. So there's three different types of energy here, which will hopefully, all together, will mean that my tree will survive. It's not an easy spell, this. What I'm doing is I'm commanding very, very distinct energy to me and to this tree. And that is difficult. I mean, the question is, if, if I didn't do this spell, would the ash tree die? So come with me and I'll show you what I'm going to do. The ash tree is just by our old kennels, as you can see here. It's a beautiful old tree, probably 150 years old, maybe. So we had the tree surgeon look at the ash tree yesterday, and he said that it will definitely come back next year. It is the year after that there will be the problem, because unless the tree can heal that wound, then infection can get in or rot can get in and the tree will fail. So hopefully we'll know but not for another two years. <sighs> Note to self, never let a teenage boy pick up an axe. It actually makes me feel sick to look at this damage that those wretched teenagers caused. However, let's get on with this spell and hopefully save this magnificent tree. This is the wand that I'm actually using, the Ash Dryad wand. And when I hold it in my hands, it was really weird because it feels hot. I mean, not cold in any such way. It doesn't feel like a twig. It feels hot. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is cast a circle. I cast a circle about this tree to join its energy alone with me, to crease its power with Mother Earth, and for all us to become one and three. I cast a circle three times in the end because three is a very resonant number with me and I think it helped with the fact that I was casting one circle for the tree, one for the dryad and one for Mother Earth. So that was my circle cast. I was trying to create a, I'm creating an area around the trunk of this tree, which means that the ash tree and myself and Mother Earth energy can all come together and help this ash tree grow strong. So that's the, the circle is simply a powering up. Now we have to command the energy. So placing my hand upon the tree and putting the wand, the dryad wand, against it. I can now say, I command the remnants of the dryad energy from the ash tree on the hill to join with me and Mother Earth in helping this tree heal, grow strong and true. I said this phrase or a version of it several times over. I think actually it was three times in the end. You need to be very, very firm with your commands because how else can you really ensure that that energy is coming to you? You're forcing it and pushing it into this tree. And this is what I'm doing here, is just letting the energy go through me and through Mother Earth and into the tree. And when I feel it's done, I stop. <laughs> I'm feeling incredibly emotional. I like, I, I want to cry. And I, I, I can feel the energy of the ash tree from the hill, which is literally just there. I can see the remnants of it above the top of the hill. I'm going to leave its branch to help the energy know where to come.
it's got a anchor point. And now, time will tell. And let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear your opinion. Otherwise, don't forget to go to my Patreon and, and you can learn how to do these techniques as well. Go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Medal. All the details are on there for you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and enables me to keep going. I love a bit of subscribing and that sharing thing. You've got to press that button and press share. And I will see you 